Hi everybody and welcome back to the Pro Builder How to Make Tutorial Series recreating the E1 M1 level from Doom in Unity 3D. In this video we'll take a look at how I have the custom collider volume set up in the E1 M1 level here. And for those of you not familiar with the collider volume type in Pro Builder, this will be a quick intro to how those work. So first of all we'll take a look at a few of the colliders that I have in the first area of the level here. And the collider volumes are any of these Pro Builder objects with the light green surface and the grid work across it, so they're slightly transparent. For example, this one right down here. Collider volumes are one of the special entity types in Pro Builder that make it easier for you to develop and build your levels. So just a quick refresher, there's several types. You can see them all over on the left hand side in the Viz Groups panel. So there are detail which is anything that's basically just smaller, simple items. Then there's world, and that's going to be large items that will not only be occluded, but also occlude other items in the occlusion. Movers are anything that are going to move in your level. So that would be mainly things like doors. See the doors turning on and off here. Or elevators and moving platforms. For example, over here, we have the elevators and platforms as well. Those are all fairly basic geometry, visual types. The last three types, collision, trigger, and no draw, are special types that are used for other items. First in the list is collision, which we're looking at here. I can toggle those on and off. I'll skip the explanation of the collision types since we're going to be focusing on that in the tutorial in a second. But moving on quickly, we have the trigger types. And these are essentially used for anything that the player is going to walk through or any other object is going to move into and cause an event to happen. Lastly, there's the no draw. This isn't actually an entity type so much as a material type, but it does have special properties. There's only one small amount of no draw on this level that I've added, and it's right out here. So what no draw does is when you apply it to the face of an object, of a pro builder object, it can be made simply not just invisible, but absolutely non-existent to the game. So this is extremely useful when you have any faces that need to block light such as over here. I do want them to block light so that it's going to bounce around properly in this courtyard, but the player will never ever see it and will never be interacted with in any way. This can also be very useful if you need to block direct light so it's not causing the leaks and sort of light seams that you can sometimes see current Unity 4.3.4 as this video is in. There's a bit of a light leak unless you're blocking it with a real face versus a back face. No draw can have a variety of uses, but we're not really going to get into that in this tutorial. Moving back to the collision, so here we have a special collision type object. As you can see, it's just a simple regular Pro Builder object, nothing different. I can still edit it just the same using extrusion or anything at all like that. There's no difference. All I do to set it as a collider type object is first create it, of course, and then hit C on the keyboard and it will set it as a collider type. Now this object will always automatically hide itself when you go into play mode, but the collider stays. So it's essentially a simple trick so that you don't have to turn on and off any custom colliders you have every time you go back and forth to play or edit the level. It can also be handy using again the Viz Groups panel over here that you can simply toggle them on and off right here. In case you have a lot of these, or especially with items like the triggers, if they're getting in the way of working in your level, you can quickly turn them on and off. Moving back to the stairway there. So this is a great use for the colliders. You can place them over top of stairways. I'll turn this off for now. Since obviously with a complex mesh on this stairway, we really don't need to use all of that for a collision mesh. Instead, we can just add this collision volume around it, and now that's going to be used for the collision and it's much more efficient and has the added bonus that the player will walk nice and smoothly up that instead of having to jump or bump up these stairways. Another good use for collision is any area where you need to block the player from moving through something. So this is useful for large windows such as this, although it's important to note here just a bit of a game design. You don't want to have a artificial barrier. So without the grid in the center here, or this mesh, if I simply blocked the player from being able to jump here, but it could jump, but they could jump over nearly any other one meter high obstacle, that's just frustrating and annoying and bad game design. 
So be careful about that. Bit of a tangent, but um, useful, perhaps. Anyway, these collision volumes make a good way to block the player from jumping through or into that without having to use a special mesh collider on the grid piece itself. Note that these simple boxes here are simple shapes. You can set as a regular box collider, so it's again even more efficient than the mesh collider that we used on the stairway here. So that's just one level further that you can use. But again, you can still edit this exactly like any other Pro Builder object. And of course, the collider keeps up with it exactly. Yet another use for the custom collision volumes is areas like this. Here we have a slight ledge that the player needs to move up and over. And Doom happened to have fairly high ledges. This is actually about half a meter, I believe. So keeping true to the original game, I kept most of the heights about the same. The problem is with a current gen character controller, it's not going to walk up and over that ledge normally. You're going to walk up to it, bump, stop, and then have to jump over it, which is of course a problem and breaks the immersion. So it's very simple to add a quick helper collision object here, essentially, so that as the player walks up to this ledge, they'll simply be moved up and over it. Very, very simple to add a little custom collider like this here. One last use that's not actually used in this level, since it's very simple, is if you happen to have areas where the player might catch themselves, this is actually a fairly good example. Let's say this light itself wasn't actually here. And maybe we'll just pretend that this corner was a little bit smaller than this. There's a good chance that as the player runs towards this entryway or through the doorway here, they might get part of their collision caught on the side of the door here, especially if this were a smaller item or stuck out a little further. There's lots of cases where in more detailed level you'd have various items that are going to need to have collision, but you don't want them to actually catch the player and cause frustration while playing. So it's very useful to be able to set up a quick extra collision area here. We'll create one now. And this is something that used to be referred to as player clip. So it's just going to clip the player if you set it on, uh, if you set your game to use certain layers for the collision. Or it could clip everything and that would be fine too. So we need to set up something that's going to catch the player and keep them from being caught on that area. I'll just pull these right over and merge the verts to keep this efficient. And then this will just pull into the wall a little ways. So with this, I hit C on the keyboard. Now it's a collider object. And if the player were to run at this wall while trying to get into the level, they would be nice and easily pushed a little bit by that collider so they end up moving smoothly into the level, completely unaware that what they think is their perfect skill in maneuvering is actually a little special trick that you, the level designer, added to make their experience just that much more awesome. And it's little things like this that really do make a good FPS game, especially uh, definitely helps in other games as well, but I've noticed really if you look at landmark games like TF2 or Half-Life and other especially fast first-person shooter games, they have tons of these built into their level to just keep moving the player along smoothly and quickly and not allow any annoying hang-ups or catches that are going to break the experience. Along those same lines, items like this, the more optimization you can add, even in something as simple as this, is really going to add up. Every little thing adds up, and this is just one more item. Instead of having that complex mesh in the stairway for the collision, you have this simple mesh for the stairway. Much better, lots of these will add up. And that's really it for the collision tutorial here. Pretty simple concept, and not a lot to it. It's something to go through and work around in the end of your level once you have everything put together, but could also be very useful, I suppose, during the early stages when you just need to smooth areas over the same. So either way you'd like to use it, there's um, no real must-use scenario for this, except that do use it. Very useful, very handy, and can make your game both perform better and play better. So thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the future tutorials.